So here we are in Cakewalk by Band Lab, and I've got a bass guitar track and a drum track. Now the problem is the kick drum and the bass guitar are masking each other or cancelling each other out and that's because they occupy many of the same frequencies. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. We're going to be solving this problem today by using sidechain compression or as it's sometimes called ducking. So let's start off with an overview of our demo project. I'm using this free bass guitar plugin from Ample Sound. I'll put a link for that in the description down below. And I'm also using this free drum kit plugin, MT Power Drum Kit. It too. Familiar to many of you and I'll also put a link for that in the description down below. Now I'm using this drum kit not only because it's a great drum kit but also if we go to the mixer section over here you can see that we can send each drum to a separate output. That means over here in Cakewalk and I'll bring up the console view here you can see that there is a kick drum channel here, a snare drum channel, hi-hat and cymbal etc. Now that means that I can use the kick drum independently to trigger a a compressor on my bass guitar over here and that is the basis excuse the pun of sidechain compression now if you happen to be using something like si drum kit which came with cakewalk or something like a drum loop which is just a stereo file then it's much more difficult for you to separate that kick drum from everything else in order to use it to trigger the compression but i will be showing you how to deal with that towards the end of this video do stick around for this part don't skip ahead watch this part first and then watch that part at the end to figure out how to solve that issue so this is the track that we're dealing with <laughs> Now let's just shut these windows, we don't need to see those anymore. Now I'm going to start off actually by freezing these tracks, but you don't need to do this for sidechain compression. I'm only doing this for demonstration purposes so that we can see the waveforms of each drum and the bass guitar. So I'm freezing the drums here and you can see the waveforms there and I'll also go ahead and freeze that bass guitar as well. And I'm just going to drag that kick drum down next to the bass guitar so that we can see them alongside each other let's just drag that out a little bit and we can zoom in on those and let's have a look and see the relationship between the two instruments so we can see here the bass guitar and the kick drum happen on these first three uh, notes here at the same time or roughly at the same time but note that the bass uh, notes the bass guitar notes here are much much longer than the kick drum yeah that's kind of important to remember later on just for your information the kick drum uh, note if you like or beat is around about 150 milliseconds long or so maybe up to 200 and this one the bass guitar is around about sort of 800 milliseconds long okay so it's much longer that's just important to remember for later on so for the remainder of this tutorial i'm going to be using the console Console view so I'll go to its tab at the bottom here double click on it and that will bring it up to full screen so we can see what we're doing now as I mentioned we're going to be using the signal from the kick drum that's the fourth track in here to trigger a compressor on our bass guitar that compressor is going to reduce the volume of the bass guitar just while the kick drum is playing it will return back to normal after the kick drum has stopped playing okay so with well after each beat of the kick drum has stopped playing i should say so we need to start off by adding a compressor to the bass guitar so i'll go up to effects here click on plus i'm going to go to insert audio effects and then go down to the cakewalk folder where i will select the sonatus compressor that's the free compressor that comes with cakewalk by band lab so you can follow along using that now if i play the track and you watch this diagonal line here on the display you'll see the dot move up and down there and that will indicate the level uh, that the compressor is receiving or the signal the compressor is receiving let's have a look at that And you'll see that that was corresponding to the signal from the bass guitar. But of course, we don't want it to be responding to the signal from the bass guitar. We want it to be responding from the signal of the kick drum. Okay, so we need to go over to the kick drum and go up to the send section here. Click on plus. And amongst this list, which will be a little bit different for you, you need to go down to you find sonatus effects, compressor, side input 
bass. That's the, that bass part is the name of the track where that compressor is. So we'll click on that. Now there's a signal being sent from that kick drum to the compressor. Now another thing I like to do at this point, which is quite important, is to check that we have this switched off. This is uh, set so that the signal will be post fader. That means that the level of the signal will be affected by the fader here. I don't particularly like that. I want a consistent uh, signal being sent through so that we're always triggering in the same way. So I switch that off, okay? You can use it with it switched on, but I personally prefer it to be switched off. Now, if we play the track again and you look at that diagonal line and you look at that uh, circle moving up and down there, you'll notice that it now corresponds to the signal coming from the kick drum. However, there's no compression happening yet, and that's because we haven't set up the basics, especially ratio and threshold. So I'm gonna start off with the ratio. It's set to, uh, to one to zero at the moment. I'm just gonna change it to something like, it doesn't really matter too much, but one to four, okay? Just so that we've got some compression happening. Now we need to adjust the threshold while we play it. We need to drag it down until we reach a point where the compressor is actually being triggered. That will show over here. Let's have a listen to the track and do that now. <laughs> Okay, so we can see that there is some compression happening there, and it's fairly subtle, which is normally the case for this kind of compression. But of course, your actual settings are going to depend on your track, to, to particularly the threshold, but the taste of how you want it is going to depend on the ratio, how much you want that volume to be knocked down by the kick drum. It's kind of according to taste or what you need for the mix. Okay, so you, you're going to have to play with that yourself and listen. Very, very important to listen. Okay. Now, the the other two settings which are really important are attack and release. Normally you just want the attack down all the way down to zero just so that the compressor gets triggered right away as soon as the, the kick drum um, has some signal going to it. The other, um, uh, the other setting here, release, is really dependent upon your track and the, the effect that you want. Remember earlier, we looked at the length of the two instruments. The kick drum normally lasted for around about 150 milliseconds in my track, and the bass guitar, or one of its long notes, lasted for around about 800 milliseconds. So obviously, if I had this release up really, really high, up to 800, what's going to happen is it's going to crush that, uh, well, not really crush, depends on the ratio setting, but it's going to reduce that bass guitar for that amount of time at least. I mean, a little bit longer than that, in fact. But that's roughly what we're looking at, okay? So that's probably not going to be the effect you want. You can hear what's happening there. It's just really squashing the bass guitar totally. And we're not getting the sustain part of the bass guitar. So you're probably going to want it to be much less than that. Um, I'm going to put it down here to, I don't know, even something like 100 so that I still get a part of the initial um, transient of the bass guitar. But I'm killing just the first transient with the kick, but I'm still getting a little bit of that oomph at the beginning of the bass guitar. Let's have a listen. <laughs> Still may be a little bit too much, to be honest with you, so I'll knock it down. Okay, now you're going to need to play with it from there um, in order to get it right for your song, okay? It may take a while for you to get used to this, but just do take into account those differences in length. If you want those sustained parts of the bass guitar to come through, okay, you don't want to kill the whole instrument off. Now, before we get into using this with a drum source where we can't separate the kick drum from the other drums, so something like the SI drums, which come with Cakewalk, or a stereo file like a drum, loop. I want to tell you that I was asking my friend Morgan Freeman the other day about his favorite Facebook group, and this was his reply. Hey Mike, thanks for asking. My favorite Facebook group is, of course, the Creative Sauce Cakewalk Group, full of fine folk helping me with solutions in my favorite recording software. Follow the link below to join, and tell them <laughs> Morgan sent you.
So let's look at the scenario where you just have a stereo source for your drums and you can't easily separate out that kick drum to use it as a trigger. It could be the case like this one where I have SI drums or it could be something like a drum loop which is on a stereo file. In fact, I'm going to close this SI drum window here and I'm actually going to freeze that track. We'll just see that happen there and you can see now it actually is a stereo file, just the same as if you were using one of those loops. Okay, so I'm going to go down to the console tab here, double click on it so we can go to full screen. Now the basis of what we're going to do here is to try and separate those low frequencies in that drum kit which mostly contain just, just the kick drum in this case and we're just going to use those low frequencies as the trigger for the compressor so we'll go to the send section here on the drum track we'll click on plus and we'll go down to new stereo bus that will create a new stereo bus right over on the right hand side here and i'm going to rename that to uh, let's call it kick uh, comp okay for kick compressor whatever you want to call it it doesn't matter now i'm going to go back over to where i did the send over here and again i'm going to switch this button over so it's pre-fader so that it's not being affected by this fader down here and in fact i'm going to just push that fader all the way down for the moment so that the only thing that we're going to be hearing is this bus that's just for the moment by the way we'll turn it back up later so let's just play the drums for a moment <laughs> And you can see they're only coming through this bus over here. So let's do some EQing here so we get rid of um, all of the top end of this. So we're just really hearing the kick. I'm going to use the built in pro channel EQ here. So I'll just click this little button at the top of the channel. I'll just drag this over so you can actually see what's going on there. And then I'm just going to double click on the EQ here like so. I just make sure it's switched on, in fact. And then I'm going to go down to this LP button here. This is the low pass filter. OK, I'm going to switch that on and I'm just going to adjust its frequency a long way down, somewhere down here. And in fact, make it slope pretty sharp there okay now if we have a listen to this you're mostly going to hear just the kick drum in fact let's just mute that bass guitar for a moment so that we can only hear the drums i'll double click on this again so we've got rid of all of the sort of hi-hat cymbals and most of us there, we've got the low end of the snare there, but that should be fine because the next thing i'm going to do is just boost these uh, this bass frequency down here So we're getting a real thud there, aren't we? Only from the kick drum. And in fact, if we close this down and we look at the meters here next to the uh, bus, you'll see that the meters are mostly being triggered by that kick drum. Okay, and it's just clipping a little bit at the moment. So what we can do is just turn that send down a little bit. Okay, so the main thing that we now have on this channel is that kick drum in terms of um, how much is being is triggering that meter there. Okay, so what we want to do now, we've already got our compressor here, yeah, on the bass guitar as we did earlier. So we now need to send that bus through to that compressor just as we did before so i'll click on sonatus effects compressor side input bass okay click on that and then let's just make sure that what's happening when we look at the metering here is that it's being triggered by that kick drum and you can see that is happening so let's unmute our bass guitar and let's just bring our main drum level back up on the channel over here we can turn this bus down that really doesn't matter i'll just uh, switch that one over from post to pre so we'll turn that fader down because we don't need to actually hear that we're just using it as a trigger let's have a look again <laughs> So you can see there that the signal there is just coming from the low end of the kit. And we can go ahead now and again, adjust our ratio to something reasonable, bring down our threshold, just adjust that ratio again there, sorry. Bring down our threshold and we'll start to get some compression. And again, we need to adjust our attack and our release as we did before. So this tutorial contained a lot of routing, didn't it? A lot of sending of signals through to different places in Cakewalk by Bandlab. Is it routing or routing? You tell me in the comments down below. Now, I know a lot of you avoid doing these kinds of things because you find it a little bit confusing. Well, let me end that confusion for you by pointing you in the direction of this video right here, which I made all about buses and sending and routing in Cakewalk by Bandlab. 
I'm sure it will be helpful to you and will get rid of that confusion. Go on, watch it right now.